Hello everyone, welcome to Linux Fundamentals video in the Cloud Park Shala video series. Uh, in this video series, we are discussing basic Linux commands that everyone should know. This is part 7 of the video series wherein we would be discussing multiple Linux commands like chmod, chown, jobs and kill. Now these are very important commands that every Linux administrator or the person using Linux should be aware of because these are what would come into play in critical times. So let's jump into the first command. The first command uh, that we would be looking into is chmod in this video. chmod is a common command that modifies a file or directory's read, write and execute permissions in Linux. Each file is associated with three user classes, owner, group member and others. The syntax that we use for chmod is chmod, we give an option and then the permissions and then the file name. We, for example, uh, the owner is currently the only one with a full permission on the node.txt that is read, write, execute permissions. So he can read the file, he can write the file as well as he can execute that file to allow a group user and others to read the file we have to execute the command chmod 777 node.txt which would change the permissions of the file there are some other options that can be included while running the same thing uh, we could say hyphen c which changes the display information when a change is made hyphen f is silent suppresses the error messages if there are any and hyphen v is for the verbose mode to display our diagnostics of each process file. Let's look at the lab and try to understand how this can be done. So I'm already into the temp Ubuntu folder. This is the temporary folder that we created. And if you see that texting.txt is having a read write, read write and read permissions. And the owner of this file is Ubuntu and the group which owns the file is also Ubuntu. If I have to change the permissions of this particular file, what I'll do is chmod. The current permissions that are there on this file is read write, which means 6, 6, 4 on texting.txt. Now, if I run this command, you would see that nothing actually changes in the file permissions of this file because the permissions that you see over here that is read write, read write, and read is exactly 664. Now if I have to change this to 775, what I would do is, what would happen is, you would get read write execute permissions on this file and you would also see that the color formatting of the file changes to green, which means that this file can be now executed by the person Ubuntu. So we change the permissions from read write to read write execute read write execute and read execute by saying 755 so this is about the chmod command wherein you could change the permissions of the files according to the requirement the next command that we are looking over is chown chown command lets you change the ownership of a file, directory or a symbolic link to a specific username. The basic format that you see over here is chown. We have some options. We give the owner and then the group and then the name of the file. Now if I want to change the permissions for two files, I could give one file after another which we would see in the next lab section. If for example, if I want to make Linux user 2 the owner of the file name.txt, what I'll do is I'll say chown Linux user and the file name.txt. Let's look at this same thing in a lab environment. So I'm already there in the temp Ubuntu folder wherein we already have texting.txt file. The owner of the file is Ubuntu. Now what I can do is with chown, I could change the owner of the file to root for texting.txt. What would now happen is you would see that the owner has changed from Ubuntu to the root user. 
what I can also do is if I want to change both the owner as well as the group's permission of a particular file what I could do is I could give the group details after a colon so this would change the permissions of texting underscore update file to root root so here we have changed the owner permissions to root here we have changed both the owner as well as the group permissions to root so this is how we change permissions of files to different users in Linux the next command that we are going to discuss is jobs a job is a process that the shell starts the job command will display all the running processes along with their statuses remember that this command will only be available in certain cell shells that is CSH bash TCSH and KSH the command for jobs is very simple uh, you would have already seen that we had something called as a tars some some program uh, some file name and the directory once we provide an ambassador at the end this would start a job in the directory so now let's look at the lab for the jobs command so what we would be doing is I've already logged into my virtualbox VM I cleared screen I'll just increase the font a bit and if you see if I run the command jobs I would not see anything or nothing would be displayed on the screen what I can definitely do is if I type sleep for thousand seconds and give an ambassent at the end what would happen is this sleep command would then go into the foreground and then be running as the job with the job ID one two two one if I now do jobs I would be able to see that there is a job ID which is already running and we would be able to see the status of the jobs that are running similarly I could run a different command like sleep and I would now be able to see two jobs running with both the process IDs being mentioned here earlier in the case if I just ran jobs I just saw the status of the jobs whereas if I do a hyphen L you would also get the ID of the job or the PID of the job that is actually running the next command that we would be looking into is kill we use the kill command to terminate and an unresponsive program manually it will signal misbehaving applications and instruct them to close their processes to kill a program you must know its process identification number or basically call as the PID if you don't know the PID we can run the following command to get the PID that's PS and then UX after knowing what signals to use uh, and the program PID we could enter the command kill and then a signal option and then the PID of the number for example the programs PID is 63773 and if you want to kill this program or terminate this program running on the system all I have to do is uh, mention kill hyphen nine six three seven seven three or I could also say kill sig kill six three seven seven three this would exactly do the same thing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, we use kill hyphen nine as a go-to command in order to kill any running processes which are unwanted or any processes which are unresponsive but still carrying forward the following are the most commonly used signals one is hung up the process so 9 is unconditionally terminates the process and 15 stops a running process gracefully now let's go into our previous example here if you see that we still have our jobs running now if I had to uh, get the ID of the jobs that are running what I'll do is do a PSF and EF 
and then do a grep for sleep because I know the command that is being run is sleep so I grep for that and I would find that these are the two commands which are actually running so if you see the PID or the ID that we get when we run jobs is exactly the same ID that we have in the ps-ef command all I have to do to kill the process is kill hyphen 9 and then give the process ID and this should kill the process ID as we speak so this is how we can terminate unneeded processes from running in the background and this way we could get rid of all unwanted processes if I have to kill uh, multiple processes for example if I run um, sleep maybe this and let's say this and you would see that I would end up having three different processes if I have to kill multiple iterations of a similar process or if I have to kill multiple process IDs all I have to do is give all the process IDs with a space and that should get rid of all process IDs now we should be aware that when we do a ps-ef we also get the actual command that we run so that's not to be killed because that would have automatically killed by now now if I do the same thing you would see that uh, all the sleep IDs have been killed and nothing is running at the moment so ps-ef grep hyphen i for sleep would give us nothing at the moment so this is how we could kill multiple processes that are running on the linux shell this is very important to get rid of processes which are unresponsive that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching i hope you like the content of the videos if so please like and share the video with as many folks as possible so that we could spread the knowledge across to multiple groups if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when we release our next videos thank you so much for watching keep having a great day